Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. It is day one of the Paranormal Romance Readathon that I'm co-hosting with five of my awesome romance booktuber friends and I am doing a vlog, one of my rare vlogs that I do and save just for readathons. I'm linking all of my co-hosts down below, make sure to subscribe to them, watch their stuff. I think some of them are also going to be doing vlogs, if not all of them, so be sure to keep an eye out for all of the Paranormal Romance content. So it's day one, it's actually Actually winding down late afternoon. I actually finished one book already, um, Queen Takes Nights from my TBR by Jolie Supercart. This one a lot of people commented about it saying it was very good smut and I gotta agree. I really enjoyed it for the smut but I can't say that I loved anything else about it. Like it was okay. I'm giving it three, three and a half stars. Like it was a good start to the series and it had a lot of potential but I just didn't love it or love the main characters or three main characters. I definitely do want to continue on with the series. I know my library has a couple other books um, in the series in audio so I'm gonna be borrowing those. Probably I don't have time for them during the readathon um, but definitely after. I've also started Alpha Knight by Nalini Singh also on my TBR. This is the latest book in her um, Sly Changeling Trinity series. I have my own little mini wolf right here. The heroine is a an alpha, an alpha wolf, and she falls in love with a psi, a psi arrow. I'm really excited about this one. I do really enjoy the spin-off series. I do want to show you guys though some paranormal fantasy books that I got in the mail this month in October. I'm gonna be showing them in my October book haul anyway, but I just want to show you guys them in this video because they are paranormal related. Um, they are hardcovers in series that I love and I've been trying to collect all the hardcovers in those series. So the first one was the one that I was most excited about um, and that is this hardcover. It's actually the book club edition of Lover Awakened by J.R. Ward. This is book three in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series about Zetas, the one that everyone loves. But it is the book club edition so it's a little bit different and a little bit smaller than like the regular hardcover but still I found it super cheap on thrift books it was only seven dollars so I was like okay might as well get it and it is beautiful so so happy to find it I mean I still want like the regular hardcover but this is good in the meantime honestly I thought it was a scam because it was so cheap these books run for like hundreds of dollars I don't know anybody who's actually buying them for hundreds of dollars but that's what their selling price is and then another book is of course a book by Nalini Singh I've been collecting her side changeling series and hardcovers the ones that are available it started being published in hardcover from book 10 I want to say so this one is book 11 I do have book 10 I got that one a long time ago and then I saw this one on thrift books I don't know why I never really looked on thrift books for these hardcovers because um, they come by really cheap like four to five dollars in really good condition and then these last two aren't technically paranormal romances. Um, I consider them urban fantasy but I do know a couple of people are going to be reading book one or like books in the series for the readathon and that is the first two books in the Fever series by Karen Marie Monning. This is Dark Fever book one, the hardest one to find in hardcover but I found it in perfect condition. And then book two, Blood Fever. Um, so now I have every single book in the series in hardcover. Tomorrow is Halloween. I have plans with my cousin to watch the final Twilight movie, to rewatch it. It's taken us a while to finally get through all five movies, but tomorrow is the last one. And we're gonna be baking our brookie, the brownie cookie that we always end up making. We always debate to see what we should make, text each other these different recipes. We wanted to do something Halloween related, but we were like, you know what? All of these look way too complicated. Let's just stick with our brookie, the one that we know how to make. We're gonna try to make it Halloween-ish, but we'll see how that works out. So that's it for today. Probably won't update any more for day one. Just gonna try to read more books that I can. The next audiobook that was on my TBR that I'm about to start now that I finished Queen Takes Nights is the Maria Vale book, The Last Wolf. So hopefully I enjoy that one and I'll see you guys tomorrow. It is day two of the Paranormal Romance Readathon. I'm here with my little boy who's just sleeping this Saturday and my cousin is on our way over so we can start baking. I mean hopefully they turn out okay so that should be fun. 
Right, boo? <laughs> It is day three of the Paranormal Romance Readathon, um, which means it's Sunday. Halloween was yesterday and Breaking Dawn Part 2 was so, so good. It is always such a good movie to rewatch. But I do have a couple updates for you guys right before I'm gonna go eat lunch. I kind of stopped reading Alpha Night because I checked my Libby app and it said I had two days left on my loan for Pride Maid, so... I had to start reading that before my loan expired. So now I'm in the middle of Pride Mates by Jennifer Ashley. This one is like a shifter romance. The hero is a wildcat shifter. It's interesting so far, not that deep into it, but I'm definitely not loving it quite as much as I like immediately fell in love with the first two historical romances that I read from Jennifer Ashley. I also, on my walk this morning, started listening to The Last Wolf by Maria Vale, but I just could not for the life of me get into it. Like I read an hour of it, um, but I only spent like 20-30 minutes on it because I was listening at two, two and a half speed. Listened to it during my whole walk with my dog and just like everything was flying over my head. I just didn't like what I listened to so far, so I am gonna DNF this one. Um, I already returned it back to my library. I knew I wasn't gonna finish it. So that one was a fail for me, but I did start another audiobook by Carolyn Sparks. How to Marry a Millionaire Vampire. This is book one in her Love at Stake series. This is one of those classic old paranormal romance series that a lot of people have read. She is new to me though, but I've been wanting to read this book and this author for the longest time. I'm liking it so far. The premise is really adorable actually. Like the hero who is a vampire, he accidentally breaks one of his fangs. He needs to find a dentist um, and the heroine is human and a dentist. And she's actually on the run from the Russian mob who she witnessed kill someone. So these two are kind of working together because they realize that they can help each other out. It's okay so far. I am enjoying it at least more than I enjoyed the Marie Vale book. And that's all the updates that I have for now. Today was not quite as productive as I wanted it to be. It is still day three. I didn't read much of Pride Mates. I did listen to more of the Carolyn Sparks book and that one's still going fine. Um, but instead of reading like the new books on my TBR, I ended up reading, rereading a book today. I was in a really big rereading mood. Um, I always love rereading old favorites or like angsty grovelly romances. Those are the two kinds of books that I gravitate towards when I want to reread stuff, but I at least did reread A Paranormal Romance, um, one of my favorites. That is La Faire by Cresley Cole. This book is one of my favorite vampire romances. It is so, so good. I reread it every once in a while. It gets better every single time, but it had been a while since the last time I did reread it, and I almost forgot how funny it was because La Faire, the vampire anti-hero, just cracks me up every time. So I pretty much spent the day rereading this one. Didn't really make that much of a progress with my PNR TBR, but it was still a fun reading day, so I'm counting it. Today though, we did learn some really sad news in the book community. Rachel Kane, the author, passed away. It was announced on social media and it's honestly such a loss for the book community. Like, Rachel Kane, her Morganville Vampire series was one of the first, 
young adult vampire books that I ever read. I really enjoyed that series when I discovered it because it was very different. I think the characters were a little bit older. If you haven't read Rachel Kane yet, she has a ton of like paranormal fantasy books, um, both young adult and adult. I don't want to end today's vlog on this note though, so I'm just going to talk about how today is going to be daylight savings and the clock is moving backward I think and how we're gonna have even less daylight. My friend Lisa and I, remarkably Lisa, we always talk about our struggles. Well her former struggles, my current struggles with like lighting in the background, how we film during the time that the sun starts to set and now that it's daylight savings the sun is gonna set even earlier which means I have to film even earlier. So just some booktuber struggles. This is probably the time for me to actually invest in like a ring light or something. I am just super cheap. I'm filming this on my phone. I don't have any fancy gadgets so if you want to be a booktuber or be on YouTube you don't need anything super expensive um, but it's obviously up to you. So that's it for today. No big reading updates so I'll see you guys tomorrow. It is currently day four of the PNR readathon, which means it's Monday. I have some book updates. I finally finished another book. Um, finally finished the audiobook for How to Marry a Vampire by Carolyn Sparks. This one, I know it said it was okay or like it was going fine, but I ended up liking it less and less the more I listened to it. It was very clearly like an early 2000s kind of paranormal romance and it just didn't age all that well. And honestly, it was a bit too long, a little bit too boring towards the middle. And I also thought it was hilarious that these vampires have these mental orgies, mental orgy vampire sex. The vampires in this world, they have covens and then within those covens, they all have sex with each other, but it's all mental, like in their heads. They don't actually do it physically with each other. But as soon as two people start having mental sex, anyone in the coven can join in like just knock on that mental door and invite themselves in so that was interesting and also the hero was like a virgin quote unquote a virgin physically but not mentally so that was a very interesting choice for the author and for this world i'm giving it like two maybe two and a half stars it just wasn't all that great disappointed by it i'm sad that i'm not actually loving any of these books that i'm reading so far like the threesome one queen takes knights three stars this one two stars and then dnf for maria vale pride mates is going okay hopefully it turns out better than how to marry a millionaire vampire but for my next audiobook because i'm usually always reading a book and listening to an audiobook at the same time so the next audiobook i actually didn't have another audiobook on my tbr but since i found myself i have some free time i'm gonna try to fit in dark prince by christine feehan i just borrowed it from my library there was a copy available and it also fits for the dark in the title bingo square which was i think the only square that i needed to complete the whole thing but i have had christine feehan on my tbr for a very very long time it's a long long audio book though like 11 12 hours those are all the reading updates that i have i'm trying to finish up pride mates before my loan expires it's like a day left now but i do want to mention not pnr related but yesterday the bridgerton trailer or teaser trailer dropped and i'm actually so excited it looks so pretty like the production value looks pretty good so hopefully it actually does turn out really well and that if it does well they'll continue on making more romance book adaptations. It is Monday, Monday night. I'm currently in my pajamas. One more chapter, Hello Lovely Sleep shirt. I pretty much live in Hello Lovely clothes nowadays, but today I got some exciting book mail. I already opened it because I am the worst and super impatient. Like I always open them for Instagram and post there and then I'm like oh wait I have a YouTube channel I should probably also do that there but I already opened it. It is some goodies from Valentine PR which is a PR company that I love working with. They were super nice to ask me and asked me to ask the other co-hosts to see if we wanted some paranormal romance paperbacks and of course we said yes. So here is what I got. Spells by 
Kristen Proby. This is book two, actually. Shadows, book one, Bayou Magic series. This is a PNR series set in New Orleans. I don't really know the specific type of PNR, maybe witches or something like that, but it is signed. It's super nice of the author to do that. And then book two, which is strangely matte. <laughs> the first book is glossy, but this is part of a trilogy, so the whole series follows one main couple. And then I got The Dark Ones by Rachel Van Dyken. This is book one in her Dark One saga. I actually read this one a long, long time ago. Pretty sure I got an arc of it. I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four stars. It's a vampire romance. I did like it, but I honestly could not tell you what it's about anymore. But even though I liked it, I never actually continued on with the series. I'm not sure why. And then the last one I got was War of Hearts by S. Young, Samantha Young. This one I also read. Um, I liked it. Like I liked the potential. I didn't love it, but it was still a good start to a series. It's got a werewolf alpha hero. Um, the heroine has mysterious powers. She doesn't really know what she is. He's hired to take her by any means necessary back to the guy who hired him to do so. It was a lot of fun. I also do want to continue on with this series. Book two is already out and then book three is coming in mid-November. This is another series that I need to keep reading. And then also along with these books came a lot of candy in this trick-or-treat bag. Lots of M&Ms. One actually exploded in the box, um, but lots of goodies. I actually didn't buy any for Halloween, so this is perfect. But I'm finally reading Christine Feehan, Dark Prince by Christine Feehan, and, and I'm actually enjoying it a lot. The audiobook cover, though, looks absolutely ugly. I don't know why. Um, I posted it on Instagram and then someone told me that a lot of her earlier books or like the earlier books in the series are very old school and I was like yeah I could kind of tell from their first meeting um, where the guy is a bit forceful, very very alpha, um, like old school alpha, which I'm fine with. It doesn't bother me as much as it used to in the past, but it is a paranormal romance centering around these creatures called Carpathia. I'm also making my way a little bit more with Pride Mates by Jennifer Ashley. I did think it was interesting that the hero prefers to have sex in his shifter form. I was like, oh, never really see that in a shifter romance. But that is the book that I'm gonna be trying to read more of tonight. Oh, I almost forgot. I also got another paranormal romance book in the mail today. This was a total surprise. Um, it's called Bane's Choice by Alyssa Day. This one is a fairly new release. There's blurbs from Janine Frost and Gina Showalter, uh, the big P in our names. But this one is a vampire motorcycle club book. So this actually does sound great. It was sent from Entangled. So thank you Entangled. And also thank you Valentine PR for the lovely paranormal romance package. And I will see you guys tomorrow or whenever I update this. Hi guys, welcome back. It is day five of the Paranormal Romance of Readathon. I'm currently out in front of my post office. I'm about to mail something to someone. I have my mask, my Hello Lovely mask. I'm actually all decked out in Hello Lovely stuff, a sweater that is covered in dog hair. And this mask came in one of the surprise boxes. I love it. I have finished Pride Mates. I finished it last night, pretty much just in time before I had to return it um, to my library. It was okay. Okay, um, I did expect a little bit more just because I do love Jennifer Ashley, um, her historical romances, so I was curious to see, you know, how her paranormal romances would compare. Um, this one was okay. It was like a good start to the series, but nothing to rave about. It was like three, three and a half stars, but I did take a look at some of the other books in the series, and only the second book in the series follows this family, like the Morrisseys, Liam's brother, Sean. He gets his book in book two, but nothing about the nephew Connor. I mean, he is a baby, but you know, maybe she's saving a book for him later, but there's like 20 books and 
no sign of him. And also the book, the series, jumps around to different locations, so I don't even know if we ever get to see Liam and his people, his shifters, ever again. So that is a little disappointing because I do like this family, and I feel like there's also so much to do with Liam's father, Dylan. I do kind of want to read the other books in the series, at least book two, but just not anytime soon. I would rather read her historical romances before I start her PRs again. That's about all the book updates that I have. I haven't really continued reading more of The Power of Hades or Group Buddy Read, but it is pretty short, like 200 pages, so I'm hoping to finish it today. Still haven't gone back to Alpha Night because I had to stop for Pride Maids, and then I was like, okay, I should probably also read and finish the Buddy Read so that we can all talk about it during the live chat. I will update you guys when I finish my next book. It is Tuesday night, day five of the PR Readathon. Okay, hold up. My dog wants to leave the room. <laughs> Reading wise, I'm about halfway done with Dark Prince by Christine Feehan. Um, this audiobook, it's going well so far. I'm really into it. I'm still not 100% sure what a Carpathian even is. It's like shifter but also vampire. I'm still liking it. It's very much Faded Mates. The hero is like this powerful being and as soon as he meets or he starts talking to the heroine who is human but has psychic powers, he is like instantly in love with her or at least knows that he's meant to be with her and she's meant to be with him. There's just a lot going on with it and I feel like I do need to pay pay attention a little bit more to it. Maybe slow the audiobook down, but at the same time it's really really long so I don't want to have to spend like too long with it. So Paranormal Romance Readathon is officially over. I did not end up vlogging or filming myself on the last two days. I did most of my reading towards the end of the readathon. Plus we had the live show, the live chat with all of the hosts and it was so much fun. We talked for two hours. Um, so I'll link it down below so you can go check it out. But I figured I would do this last part just recapping everything that I read and how I felt about them. I was able to read six books including one novella this whole week. It was a bit of a slow reading week for me and also I kind of overestimated myself when I made my TBR but I did read about half of what I wanted. So the first book that I finished was Queen Takes Nights by Jolie Sue Burkhart. This book I'm counting it for the vampire romance square, the LGBTQ square, and also the indie square. I'm giving this one three stars like it was a good start to the series but I didn't love it as much as I wanted to, um, especially after so many people told me that it was really, really good. But it was smutty as expected. It is menage, so threesome. We have a heroine who discovers she is the long lost, one of the long lost vampire queens, and she needs to create this nest, this coven for herself. She meets these two vampire knights who bond with her and will protect her. It's a pretty interesting and different concept, so I wouldn't say no to reading more but didn't love it quite as much as I wanted to which is why it's only three stars for me and then I read How to Marry a Millionaire Vampire by Carolyn Sparks. This one is the first book in the Love at Stake series and it's one that's been on my TBR for forever. I sadly did not love it. Um, giving it like two maybe two and a half stars. It did start off on a good note and I did love the premise with the hero um, the vampire hero breaking his fang and needing a dentist and the heroine is a human dentist. Also for the bingo board, this one is a vampire romance, Faded Maids, and published before 2010. This one was 2005, I think. So it started off on a good note. I was actually enjoying it, but then towards the middle, it's a pretty long book too, towards the middle, it started to drag for me. I started to dislike the hero more and more since he kept going on and on about being a sin, being like this creature from hell. He just hated 
hated being a vampire because he was really religious before he actually turned so now he sees himself as an abomination um so that got tiring to read about after a while and the whole mental vampire orgy thing i was not having it so this one two star disappointing and then i managed to finish pride mates just in time before my library loan expired this is book one in the shifters unbound series by jennifer ashley this one turned out okay three stars the writing was good i mean i do like jennifer ashley the concept of this paranormal world with shifters that are segregated and have to wear collars to control like their killer instincts it was interesting but i didn't love it it is one of those few paranormal romance books where humans do know about the existence of these paranormal creatures and this human heroine she goes into the shifter city because she's a lawyer and she's representing one of the shifters that is on trial for the murder of his girlfriend it is faded mates and it does have an animal the hero is our shifter he turns into this wild cat but i did like liam and kim liam pretty much on their second meeting decides that kim is the one for him because of the whole faded mates thing and kim is like hold up i didn't sign up for this but gets thrown into the shifter world with all these secrets that the rest of the human population does not know about so this was another good start to the series that i didn't love and then i read a book that wasn't on my tbr but last minute i decided to read it because i dnf'd um the maria vale book the last wolf i tried to listen to that one lasted an hour and just returned it early and because i didn't have another audio on my tbr i decided to um, borrow dark prince by christine feehan which is one of those old school classic paranormal romance series that i hadn't read yet but this one is finally one that i did enjoy a lot i'm giving it four stars it is kind of a long book but i did love the romance it is faded mates and it's also published before 2010 it kind of is a vampire romance and also kind of has a shifter the series is about these creatures these ancient paranormal powerful creatures called the Carpathians and they're kind of part vampire part shifter they just have a lot of abilities including what vampires have and what shifters have and when a Carpathian male goes out of control like he can't control himself anymore he then turns into an actual vampire it is an old school romance so the hero he's an alpha hero and does what he wants and as soon as he meets or connects his mind with the heroine who is human but has psychic abilities they start talking to each other in their minds and he claims her for himself Mikhail the hero is the prince um, the leader of the Carpathians and the Carpathians are a dying race he is very over the top and possessive which is nothing you know really new in a paranormal romance there is quite a lot going on in this book Mikhail's sister was murdered and he's trying to find the people who killed her he's also trying to find a way to stop his race from dying but overall I did really like it I like this world I'm excited to read more of it even though there are so so many books in the series I actually debated between reading this one or Fantasy Lover by Sherilyn Kenyon another old-school classic paranormal romance but I just went with Dark Prince so I could check off the box with Dark in the title and then I finally got to our buddy read The Power of Hades by Eliza Rain and Rose Wilson this is the first book in the Hades trial series and I sadly did not love it, it was a two-star read um like the story itself was three stars but the writing it just brought it down for me it was very amateurish writing not polished at all there was no character development um barely any romance i'm just really sad that this book didn't live up to its potential because it is a hades and persephone retelling it's a second chance romance persephone was married to hades until she got her memories taken away from her and she's been living as a human for 20 something years but now she's taken back to Olympus because of Zeus and thrown into these Hades trials, deadly trials, to become Hades's wife again. So the whole blurb itself sounds amazing and when I realized it was a second chance romance, kind of, I got really really excited but the execution was just not there. The writing was so bland, there was barely any romance, Hades showed up maybe three times, Persephone is either really smart or really dumb. I just sadly did not like this one but I did end 
end up skimming the other two books in the series because I was curious how it turned out. I shouldn't really have bothered. They weren't that great either from what I skimmed through. And then the last book that I read is a novella, so I'm counting the novella square. It also has a shifter. It is a werewolf romance. I read Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert, which was a four-star read, so I ended this readathon with a good book. It is a standalone, but the author is apparently writing more in the series. But this one, standalone, one couple, happily ever after. It's a werewolf faded mates romance, so as soon as the werewolf hero Luke smells the heroine, he knows she's the one for him. What he doesn't know though is that Chastity has grown up in a family of huntresses, women who hunt crazy werewolves. It was just really cute and fun, really fast. The heroine, she has plans to seduce Luke in order to get closer to him so that she can kill him, but he's a bit too sweet and loving for her to actually make that killing shot. It was a really fun read. I'm so, so glad Talia Hibbert is writing more paranormal romances. And if you love a hero who is obsessed with the heroine and the heroine who is a bit stabby, you will definitely love this one. I sadly did not end up finishing Alpha Night by Nalini Singh in time. By the end of the readathon, I did make it like 40-50% of the way through. It's been good so far, not my favorite, but I am gonna try to finish it up soon. I didn't quite manage to complete all the bingo squares. I'm missing one, the angel romance, because I didn't get to it in time. I just wasn't reading all that much, but I am still so happy that we did this readathon. It was a lot of fun. Love seeing people's posts, people sharing about them and their stories. But that's all I have for the readathon. Hopefully you enjoyed this vlog. Um, I'll link everyone, all the other hosts in the description below. So make sure to follow them or subscribe to them and watch their PNR readathon videos. A lot of them did daily vlogs, which is amazing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.